Hey everybody, it's Josh Alexander from The Brokerage and your host of Orange County Housing Market News. On today's episode, I'm going to be going over the top five things you need to know about when you're looking for a new home. Also, in case you've never visited this channel before, this channel is all about Orange County real estate. So I go over local trends happening in the market, I interview other experts in the field, and then I also go over different tricks, tips, and advice for both buyers and sellers to help you out in today's market. So if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, this is a great place to start. So let's go ahead and talk about what to look for when purchasing a home. Okay, so for months now, every night you've been sitting on the couch, browsing through Zillow, checking out new listings as they pop up, and dreaming about eventually purchasing a home. And now you have finally taken that next step, you've talked to a lender, you have that pre-approval in your hand, because in today's market, you definitely need to have that done before you do anything else. And now you're finally ready to start actually going out and checking out some open houses, setting up those private showings with your agents, and start to look at properties that you might be interested in purchasing. So as a buyer, this is one of the most exciting times when you're trying to purchase a house. You get to go into other people's homes, imagine yourself there, imagine your family there, your furniture, the get-togethers, the memories you're going to make. So it's a very exciting time to be able to go through and start touring these properties. However, because it's so exciting, a lot of times buyers don't really pay attention to the small stuff when they're looking at homes as they're walking through it. And that could really put you at a disadvantage when you're placing offers. So that's why I wanna make this episode today and go over the things you need to be looking at, not just the overview of the house, but the small things that really might make a difference and give you some more information about the house that you're thinking about putting an offer on. So that way, if you do decide to place an offer, you have as much information as possible and you know as much about the house before you make that offer. So let's start going over those now. So number one, we are in the digital age and with the digital age comes digital surveillance. So when you're going through someone's home at this point, you need to assume that you are constantly being recorded, whether it be a ring doorbell or security cameras inside or outside the house. When you walk through someone's home, just assume that someone is watching and listening to what you're saying. I know it's creepy, I know it doesn't sound great, but you have to assume that because it could hurt your chances of getting your offer accepted if you're saying the wrong things. So for instance, if you walk into someone's house and you just start trashing everything about it, you say how no one really spent time keeping up this home, everything's in disrepair, everything needs to be updated. If you're saying those type of things and then later on you decide to place an offer on the home, and the seller has seen that audio and video of you just going through and destroying their house, emotionally, how do you think that makes the seller feel? So you have to really understand that. And then on the other side of the spectrum, if you're walking through this and turning to your spouse or partner and saying how much you love this house, how you'll pay anything for this house, how this is the one, this is the one you're gonna go all out for, what do you think that does to your leverage when you're placing offers on homes and trying to compete with other people? If the seller knows that you're gonna be going all out and are willing to do almost anything to get this house, they're gonna be issuing more aggressive counter offers to you. Now again, should sellers be listening and watching to everybody that's walking through their house? Probably not but it's better to assume that the sellers are always watching and listening to everything you say and do inside their house. If you have to say something about the house, just make sure that you wait until you leave the house, you go outside, you can talk to your agent far enough away that some surveillance cameras in the front yard are not gonna be able to detect what you're saying, and that's gonna be the safest way to go about it. So hopefully you just had that aha moment if you haven't thought about that before, because again, it could really impact your chances of getting your offer accepted, even though it shouldn't in today's digital world. Okay, so item number two is what you should look for on the outside of the property as you're touring it. So one of the biggest things and one of the first things that I always look for when I tour a property for the first time with a client is I look up and assess the general condition of the roof. Because as a lot of homeowners unfortunately know, if you have to get your roof replaced or fixed, it could be very costly. It's one of the most expensive things that you can do as a homeowner to keep your house protected. It can cost as little as $15,000 and go up to $50,000 or more. So I always make sure I assess the general condition of the roof. Does it look like it's falling apart? Are there missing tiles? Are there cracks in the tiles? 
Are there holes where tiles should be or where roofing has slipped off? Those are the type of things you wanna take a mental note of as you're walking through the property. And that way you at least have a general idea of the condition of the roof and what maintenance might be needed in the future. Now, when you have a general inspection, they're gonna be a little bit more detailed about looking at the roof. However, before you place an offer, it's always good to be able to have a general idea of the condition of the roof. And that way you know going in and you can structure your offer in a way to make sure you keep yourself protected against any issues that might pop up on the roofing side. Of things. Second thing you want to look at is wood and wood structures around and surrounding the house. So the reason you want to look at this is because one of the big things that pops up on almost all home inspections in Orange County and most of Southern California in general is you'll find wood rot and termite damage in a lot of the exterior wood around the house. So what you really want to find is that if there is wood on the outside of the house, has it been painted? Does it look like it's been kept up and it's not falling apart and pieces are falling off of it? Because if you start to see those type of things, you'll probably know that it hasn't really been taken care of. You really need to paint those things every one to three years. So any wood on the outside of the building should be repainted at least every three years, but sometimes even more than that. So if you don't see fresh paint on it, it doesn't look like it's in good condition. It's falling apart. There's wood chips around the base of the patio cover and there's little holes that you can put your finger on and the wood starts falling apart. Those are things, again, not a deal breaker, but it's something you wanna know so you can structure your contract to hopefully try to get the seller to pay for any type of damage that was caused by wood rot or termite, which is pretty common in California to have the seller pay for that. However, in today's market, being such a hot seller's market, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's something that you want to pay attention to so you can at least try to get the seller to pay for that. And that way it just further protects you and it's one less expense that you have to worry about when you take ownership of this new home. Another thing you wanna look for is trees. So if the property has trees, especially large trees, and especially if those trees are in the front yard, you wanna take mental note of that because another big issue that you see in homes is if trees have been around for a very long time, unfortunately, sewer lines that go underneath those trees could have some issues because over time, roots will get into those sewer lines, causing backups, causing clogs, and they can be very expensive to fix because you are responsible for your sewer line from the property all the way to the middle of the street where that drains into the main line. So if you had to replace that main line, again, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars. So if you see a giant tree in the front yard, really all you need to do is just take a mental note of it, know there's a tree in the front yard, and my recommendation would be if you decide to go and place an offer on the property and you do get into escrow, just make sure that you ask for a sewer line inspection. It will be an extra 150, maybe $200 for them to go out and inspect the sewer line, but you just wanna make sure it's in good condition, there's not cracks in it, there's not root intrusion in it, because if there is, that's something you can try to ask the seller to pay for to repair, so you don't have to deal with it and all of a sudden have your toilets clogged up and your shower clogged up a few months after you move in the property because now you have a big plumbing issue that really wasn't evident when you decided to place an offer on the home. So again, not a giant issue, not a deal killer, but just make sure you have that mental note that you're going to want to have a sewer line inspection if you do get into escrow on that property. And then the last thing you wanna look for when you're touring the outside of the home is any kind of evidence of water pooling or any kind of grading where you have the property sloping towards the house instead of away from it. So it doesn't rain much in Southern California, so it's not as big of an issue as a lot of other places, but if water is going towards your house, that's never a good thing. You always want water to be seeping away from the property so you don't have issues with water pooling around the house, causing more and more damage the more it happens. So if you see evidence of dry pool spots right next to the foundation of the house, or you see active evidence of still water sitting right next to the house along the foundation in the planters, that's something, you, again, you want to take mental note of that you're going to have to get fixed to make sure you don't have further issues if you decide to place an offer and get into escrow on that property. So although there's a bunch of other things you could be looking for on the outside of the property, those are really the big ones that can cause the most issues as a homeowner. So those are the ones that I always recommend paying attention to 
as you're touring the outside of the house. So now let's go ahead and move on to number three, which is the inside of the house. Okay, so just like with the outside of the property and even more so probably, when you go on the inside of the property, there are so many things that you could be looking at. However, let's stick to some of the easy ones to look at that don't take a lot of time to identify that will give you some more good information about the house that you might be placing an offer on. So as an agent, when I first walk into a property, one of the things that I always do is I look at the major systems of the house just to assess the general condition. So I'll go and find the HVAC system. Is it brand new? Does it look like it's been there since the house was built? I just wanna see what type of condition it is because if you have to replace that unit or it looks like it might be on its way out, again, that's not a cheap replacement cost. That could be 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 dollars or more if you have to replace the AC unit. So it's always something I just check out and just to understand when it was replaced, how new it looks, and what kind of condition it's in. Same thing with the water heater. Has the water heater been replaced recently? Does it look like it's in good condition? Water heaters are a lot less expensive to replace. However, that's still probably $1,500 to $2,000 that you have to spend to get a new water heater installed if something were wrong with it. So I do check out those systems first. And then after I do that, I'll go through, start looking at the property, Every room that I go in, I always look at the ceilings first. And I know that might sound odd, but I'm always trying to identify, is there anything on the ceilings that look out of place, water spots, a fresh painted section that looks like nothing else, so it looks like someone just painted over something. I'm just trying to find anything that I can look at that looks out of the ordinary on the ceilings that might be a cause of concern. So as you're going through every room, make sure you have your head up as well as down, so that way you're checking out the whole house and can identify any issues that might be there with the property as you're touring the rooms. So another thing that I'm always looking for as I'm walking through the house is every time I pass a sink, I'm always taking the time to look underneath that sink just to see if I can see any current or past evidence of any kind of water damage to that, as well as if I smell anything weird like mold or mildew underneath, because that's usually a pretty good indication that you have some type of water issue underneath the sink. Now again, not a deal breaker, but it's something to keep in the back of your mind to be able to bring up with the home inspector if you decide to get into escrow with the property. So make sure you're always checking underneath those sinks as you're walking through the home. Okay, so we're walking through the property, we're looking at ceilings, we're looking under the sinks, we're checking out the major systems in the house to make sure they look okay. Something else that I'm always paying attention to and something that concerns a lot of buyers is I'm always looking for any cracks in the walls. So in California, just in case you didn't know, we live in an earthquake zone. And on top of that, the ground below us does expand, contract, and over time, it can cause cracks in the ceilings, in the walls, and 95% of the time, it's not going to be an issue. So when you see tiny cracks on the walls next to windows, next to doorways, that's something that as an agent doesn't significantly concern me right away because you can see that on almost every property that you look at in Southern California right now. However, you do wanna pay attention to how many of them you see as well as how big they are. If you start seeing cracks in the wall that are the size of your pinky or larger, then you know there's a good chance there might be some foundation issues with that house. Also, if you see a bunch of small cracks in the wall and they're all concentrated on one side of the house, that could be another indication that there's something else going on with the property that probably needs to be explored a little bit more. Now again, seeing small hairline cracks here and there in a house is not something that immediately concerns me because it's something I see in almost every home that I go tour. However, when you start seeing multiple cracks in the same area or larger cracks, that's something that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to and it's something that you might need to get someone out there to look at if you decide to get into escrow with that property. So the final thing that I always make sure that I'm checking out as I'm walking through the house is the general condition of the house. So you just want to make sure that whoever's currently living there has taken care of the home. They have some sense of pride of ownership. So when issues popped up, they got fixed quickly to prevent any future issues coming up later on down the road that might be even more expensive to fix. So an easy way to determine this, unfortunately buyers, you probably don't want to hear this, but if you walk into a property and there's not a lot of updates. So let's say the kitchen's original, the bathrooms are original, the carpet looks like it hasn't been replaced in 10 years. 
The nice thing about this from a buyer's perspective is now you're able to walk into the kitchen and kind of see what the general condition is. So if you walk in the kitchen, the tile's all in great shape, the grout is clean, there's no cracks on anything, the flooring looks good, the cupboards are all in perfect condition. That's a good indication that whoever currently lives there right now has probably taken very good care of their house. Now let's say the owner has been in that property for 20, 25 years. Great, that just means that you have that history knowing that owner has probably taken decent care of their house over that 25 year period. So hopefully they solve issues when they come up and not delaying that maintenance until it becomes a bigger problem down the road for somebody else. So that's something that I always look for. So let's say you go into that kitchen and you can hop back into a time machine 20 years and the condition it was in then is very similar to the condition it's currently in. Again, that's a good indication that whoever lives there probably has taken good care of the entire house. Now, this is not a 100% guarantee, but it's a good indication they probably took good care of the house, probably better than most, and it's a good thing to have in the back of your head as you're placing offers on homes and hoping that the inspector won't find a bunch of small issues all over the property. So now let's say you walk into a house and it's completely updated, everything is brand new. Well, the only unfortunate part of that is that you've kind of lost the history of the home at that point to really figure out over the years how well it was taken care of. So really the best thing you can do now is really just to determine was this a flip that was done as cheap as possible or was it something that was done with a little bit more care and maybe a little bit higher quality finishes so usually as an agent at least it's pretty easy to tell if someone in there spent the bare minimum did the crappiest floor they could did the crappiest cabinets they could and kind of put lipstick on a pig to try to get it sold quickly or if someone actually had it done the right way the person was probably still living there they spent a little bit more money for higher quality finishes higher quality craftsmanship and eventually ended up with a better quality product. So those are the type of things you wanna be looking at as you're walking through a fully renovated house. And you probably also wanna to defer to your agent's expertise when you're trying to figure out was it a quality job, was it quality craftsmanship and quality materials, or was it something that looked like a cheap flip that was probably less expensive that you might have some more issues with when you eventually move into the property because it might not have been done to code or it might not have been done in the neatest fashion. So those are the things you wanna look for on the inside of the house. So those are the type of things that visually you wanna be looking for as you're walking through the property. Now let's move on to number four, and that is smell. So I know it sounds crazy, but it's something that you need to pay attention to. So if you walk into the door and you're hit in the face with a giant smell of smoke or cat pee, it's obviously gonna be a big turnoff to a lot of buyers. However, those type of things typically you can get rid of those smells relatively easy. You do have to buy a specialized paint. You do have to replace floorings. That's obviously not cheap, but it's something that can be done to eliminate smells inside the house. However, if you walk into a house and it smells moist, you smell mildew, mold, that kind of stuff could be a lot more expensive and cause a lot more issues. So if you're smelling something like that, when you get a general inspection done, they can use a moisture meter to kind of try to figure out where that moisture might be pooling up inside the house and creating issues, but it's a lot harder to do because it's just not visible often. So you really have to do some investigations and figure out where it's coming from, how extensive it might be, and what kind of money you need to spend to get that remedied. Now again, a lot of times if there is a mold issue or a moisture issue, it can be taken care of and it usually isn't super expensive. However, there are those cases where it's a bigger issue and it could be very expensive to fix. So if you walk into a house and you smell that mildewy smell, it's something to definitely take note of and do some more exploring and digging around. Ask the agent and try to figure out if there's any more information about that smell before placing an offer on a home. Now, other side of smell, if you walk into a house and it smells like apple cinnamon, there's a Glade plug-in in every single room and you can't smell anything except that, that could be another indication there could be a problem because they could be hiding something. So when I walk into a home, I'm looking for a happy medium. Does it smell good? Great. Is that smell overpowering? then there could be a problem. So you wanna make sure that you're looking not only for the bad smells, 
but if you're hit with way too much of the good smell at the same time, that could indicate that there's another issue and there could be something else hidden in the walls or hidden someplace that you might have to deal with when you purchase the home. So that brings me to the fifth and final thing that you wanna be looking at when you're purchasing a home, and that is the neighborhood. And you've probably heard this time and time again, location, location, location. That's something that can't be changed. It's something that you wanna make sure that you find the right location before you purchase the home. On top of that, you've probably heard this before as well, but it's always better to purchase the worst house in the best neighborhood instead of the best house in the worst neighborhood. And why is that? Well, forced appreciation. So if you buy a home that needs a lot of work, you can most likely put in a minimal amount of money and be able to increase your property value very significantly. However, if you buy a nice house, there's not really much else you can do to it to really increase the property value, except wait for everybody else's property to catch up to yours. So those are things you wanna be considering. And then on top of that, when you're looking at homes, I always recommend that you drive around the neighborhood either before or after you view the home. That way you can get a general sense of what the neighborhood looks like, maybe where some amenities are, so how close the grocery store is, is there a park nearby if you have kids. You just wanna make sure that you have a general sense of what's going on in the neighborhood and what's surrounding you, so that way you don't place an offer on a home. You go through escrow, you close on escrow, move in, you're super excited to be in this nice, quiet neighborhood, and all of a sudden on Friday night, you hear a bunch of noise, a bunch of cheering, a bunch of yelling, and you realize that you're two blocks away from the local football stadium. Bunch of bright lights everywhere, making it hard for you to sleep. Those are the type of things that you wanna to try to look at before you purchase the house so you don't get into a situation that you immediately have buyer's remorse for buying the house because you didn't do enough investigation of not the house, but the neighborhood surrounding it. So that's really all the information I have for you today. I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, can you please hit that like, subscribe button, as well as share it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, as always, make sure you don't forget to hit that bell button below. That way you're notified every week when I release a new episode. So until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye.